And the speaker for the next session is Dr. Muhammad Salah Kalba. He is a senior cardiology consultant and head of the cardiology unit in Kalba Hospital MOH Sharia UAE. He is professor of cardiology, Swiss Canal University, Egypt. He's international cardiology fellow, Rennes University, France. He has been in the medical practice for 31 years of which with rich and insightful experience with a doctorate degree in cardiovascular medicine from the Swiss Canal University, rendering consultancy on cardiology. Many publications in different international journals. He has earned immense recognition and respect from reputed healthcare institutions, peers and patients. He's chairman of the annual Big Sky Cardiology Conference, which is one of the biggest conferences in UAE. I have been to the Big Sky Conference. It is packed with scientific information. I am a great admirer of Dr. Muhammad Salah. He has a masterly approach of solely unmasking the depth of the problem, and I'm sure you will enjoy the pleasures of the expertise. I'll hand over the session to Dr. Abheke Pandey and Dr. Sangram Brother. Dr. Pandey, please initiate the session. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is a very, very important topic. Uh, the current gaps in the management of the lipid lowering therapy uh, with the advent of the statins, then um, the, uh, all the newer uh, drugs, still we have gaps in coming to the uh, levels of the cholesterol. Uh, the LDL cholesterol that are decided uh, below 70%. Many of the countries do not meet uh, these particular standards. We have Dr. Salah, who is a very, very respected person in uh, UAE. We respect him and he's a very great authority. Uh, he will uh, enlighten us on this particular topic and make our ideas clear and highlight uh, how the uh, newer drugs, newer group of drugs will help us. Dr. Salah, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Manoria, for this uh, nice introduction to this uh, biggest uh, and uh, scientific conference. And I'm really happy that I'm, I'm part of this prestigious conference. I'd like to thank Mr. Chairman also for his nice introduction and the organizer and scientific committee. Uh, so without any delay, I will share my screen now. Okay, so my, my presentation today is about the current gap in the care related to the lipid lowering therapy. We know as the most cardiovascular deaths occur worldwide due to atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And in the past 60 seconds, as we know, there is 34 people with atherosclerosis worldwide have died from either myocardial infarction or stroke. There are many multiple factors may contribute to chronic heart disease risk non-modifiable and the modifiable. One of the most important modifiable risk factor is hyperlipidemia. And as we know from inter heart trial, there is a multiple risk factor all inhibited continuum. Acute myocardial infarction occur 90% of a, a, a treatable burden from the, uh, uh, due to this lipidemia. And which lipid disorder cause cardiovascular disease? As we know, ABOB containing lipoprotein are the most estrogenic part and 90% of ABOB is carried by LD. L. So LDL delay a very important risk factor in the processing or in the disease progression of acetylosclerosis in all phases, initiation, progression, and complication. And as we can see, LDL is strongly associated with coronary heart disease. There is a strong linear correlation between level of LDL and occurrence of cardiovascular disease. And as we can see, each one millimole decrease in LDL decrease the relative risk factor of coronary heart disease by 20 to 25%. One of the most important things that can explain about the current gap is the concept of total black burden and prolonged exposure to the LDL level. No matter what is the level of LDL, but how long you are prolonged or how long you are exposed to the total black burden. Black burden can be calculated either from the LDL level multiplied by time per, per year you equal total black burden. And as we can see, the higher for a higher uh, cumulative LDL exposure threshold, the longer time you expose, the higher the occurrence of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. That's why we have to make risk stratification for patient ambition with this epidemia. And as we can see, for American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, they are the, the classified into very high risk patient, 
with patients that include history of multiple major atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, even one or more atherosclerotic cardiovascular event and the multiple high-risk condition. For ECC 2019, very high-risk patients should be documented atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, diabetes mellitus with target organ damage, three major risk factors, early onset of type 1 diabetes more than 20 years, a score more than 10%, Family, familiar hypercholesteremia with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or with another major risk factor. High risk, marked elevated single risk factor, particularly total cholesterol level. Patient with familiar hypercholesteremia without other major risk factor. Diabetes mellitus with target organ damage with diabetes mellitus more than 10 years, moderate chronic kidney disease. So for any patient that you are going to receive, you have to know, make a risk stratification. Why? Because this high risk group can be benefited from adding newer LDL lower drug like ezetimibe or bcc 9 inhibitor. And this is the guideline, latest guideline in 2019. They mentioned that the LDL, it should be our target. Target, our goal, and it should be reduced by more than 50% reduction LDL, and LDL goal it should be less than 55 milligram per deciliter. One of the most important things that, of course, you have to deal with this lipidemia is the lifestyle modification. And we are in our MENA region. We have suffering a lot from this lifestyle modification, diet, physical activity, and smoking session. Then, and that's why in the guideline, you will find all the diet life, lifestyle modification is class 1A. Then we have to go to the medication. And you have LDL lowering medication. One of the most important things, increase LDL remover is statin, ezetimibe, this is canine inhibitor. I'm going to highlight all these together. As we know that high intensity, LDL lowering, um, uh, high intensity statin, LDL lowering have been proved to reduce the cardiovascular event. This is from second prevention trial or primary prevention trial. Statin is considered the main line of treatment for this epidemia for so many decades. So, is as can we have to ask ourselves, is high dose statin therapy? It is the end of the line. No, look at this. When we use high intensity statin therapy, we are able to reach a reduction of LDL by about 50%. For moderate intensity statin, we can reach up to 30%. But unfortunately, many high-risk patients don't achieve their goal uh, despite high dose of statin therapy. Approximately 78% fail to achieve LDL less than 50. Approximately 40% of patients fail to achieve LDL less than 70 milligram per DC liter. Somebody will ask, okay, let us ask to increase the dose of statin. However, if you remember always the rule of six, whatever you increase the statin dose, you will get only addition 60% reduction for the LDL level. And also another important thing, this is from latest trial, as a patient reported reason for statin discontinuation inside from PAN registry, most uh, they found that 55% of patients described or lost the continuation of statin because experienced side effect. And the duration of statin cell reduced discontinuation is 51% for then more than one year, 29% of patients discontinued the statin between one month and one year, 12% patient discussed uh, the, the stop the statin in less than one month. So let us be able to start to think about why we have the add what we call non-statin therapy. And what is the clinical? This is what we call ezetimibe, ezetrol, and this is very selective cholesterol absorption inhibitor. So when we add ezetimibe plus statin, then we can get benefit from dual inhibition of ezetimibe and the statin. Ezetimibe and decrease the sense of cholesterol, of course, uh, uh, statin and decrease the sense of cholesterol, and ezetimibe inhibit absorption of cholesterol. Both together lead to increase the excretion of LDL. So, and as we can see, ezetimibe, when commensurated with statin, there is efficient control of LDL. We can discard or we get overcome of the rule of sex by one step. And this was proven through what we called improved trial. This is very large trial, used 18,000 patients with acute chronic syndrome at high risk patients, and their LDL levels are 50 milligram per deciliter up to 25 milligram per deciliter. People, uh, patient randomized to simvastatin arm 40 milligram versus uh, combination arm ezetimibe and statin 10 to 40 milligram, and they were followed up up to six years, and the primary end point was cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, hospitalization, or coronary vascularization. And what was the result of this study? Well, we got achievement. We got a reduction of mean LDL by in the combined arm group, in simvastatin 53, in comparison to 69% for simvastatin group. Moreover, for seven-year seven year event rate, there is 60% relative risk reduction for seven-year rate for uh, in favor of ezetimibe simvastatin in comparison to simvastatin. But if we can see the result there is modest benefit. We don't get the too much benefit reduction of the LDL. So as we can see here, if we use high intensity statin plus ezetimibe, we can reach up to 65% risk reduction on LDL. But still we have a gap. We need more and more reduction. 
That's why we have to our, what can we do to improve it? You are here. Then it comes the BCCK9 inhibitor. Uh, a BCCK9 inhibitor, as we know, they are unique, uh, new and unique opportunity for cardiovascular risk uh, reduction. And they are considered fully immunized monoclonal antibodies. They are taken by subcutaneous injection. And uh, I'm gonna sure that you are gonna to hear from our next speaker about the, more about the injection therapy. But as we can see, in the absence of BCC canal inhibitor, there is more LDL receptor upregulation and the lower plasma LDL level. We have two important uh, uh, drugs in this group of patients. We have uh, Fourier, uh, Evelucumab, that has been studied in the Fourier study, and we have Alercumab that has been studied in ODC trial. And I'll just highlight both of, uh, of them trial. In Odyssey trial, it was patient that high risk patient who have recent acute myocardial infarction for about for, for four months up to 12 years. And in Fourier trials, there are about 27,000 patients with history of myocardial infarction, high risk patient. In both uh, trial, in Odyssey trial, patient randomized to use Alercumab on the top of the uh, 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 anti lipid medication, either statin plus or minus. Uh, Ezetimibe versus Belasbo, where the patient receives the usual anti uh, dyslipidemic agent, the usual one, with main follow up up to eight years. And as we can see, there is significant reduction in LDL level when we started, and the reduction occurred very early. We reached the LDL level around 40 that persists up to the end of the study. And this was translated into reduction of the primary effects in the point MIS. What is MIS? Coronary heart disease, this, non fetal myocardial infarction, and ischemic stroke, about 15% relative absolute absolute relative risk reduction. And disease risk reduction occur, uh, clinical benefit of this is kind of by extent of coronary artery disease and the baseline LDL, we can see that the more reduction occur for patients who have LDL level more than 100 milligram per deciliter. So this is come from this trial. Then we look for for the trial which use the velocumab. This velocumab, this is considered observation of very high risk patient as we seen as, as, as I show in the first slides. Patient also randomized to um, uh, their LDL level should be present 70 milligram per deciliter or or non-HDL more than 100 mg per deciliter. This means that maybe you have a normal LDL level, but still non-HDL level is high. Bishan uh, randomized either to velocumab subcutaneous 140 mg Q2 weeks or 400 Q months on top of the usual anti limit versus placebo subcutaneous. And what was the result? As we can see, there is significant reduction in LDL over the time by 59% risk reduction and the LDL level reach about almost 25 and very early in the disease and they persist up to start, to start uh, at the end of the trial. And we have also significant reduction or absolute risk reduction of relative risk reduction of primary end point in favor of olecumab arm in comparison to a placebo arm. And this benefit extended for patients who have multivessel disease or patients who has qualifying Infarction less than 10 years, 10 years ago, or patient has more than two prior myocardial infarction. And these drugs have proven they are very safe. As we can see, they, in comparison to placebo, they have no effect on no more side effect. Even the neurocognitive dysfunction is not negligible, or negligible is not affected as uh, uh, somebody claimed because we have lower. LDL. As, as we can see, when we add the BC scanner inhibitor, the less high intensity statin, then we can get more than 75% risk reduction in LDL group. If we get it, the less is it then we get more than 85% risk reduction. So we are in a very right way track. We are starting, we are trying to reduce the care and lipid uh, in the gap for the LDL reduction with this medication. That's why if we look to the recent guideline, American College of Cardiology, uh, they claim that patient has clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, you have to start very lifestyle modification. Then you have to have a very high risk patient. This is our domain. You can use high intensity or maximum statin therapy. If not, then you can add ezetimibe not reach to the goal. However, if the patient at very high risk and you don't have any issue for cost, you can start with BCCK9 inhibitor uh, directly. Then if we look to the Recent ESCC, ES dyslipidemia guideline 2019, we can find that statin is class 1A indication for elevation in maximum tolerable dose. Then if the goal not achieved, then you can add ezetimibe as class 1B. However, for secondary prevention, at very high risk patient, not achieving their goal on maximum tolerable dose of statin and ezetimibe, a combination with BCCK9 inhibitor is recommended, class 1A. Look at this, BCCK9 inhibitor is recommended, which is very new. Very high risk patient, familiar hypercholesterolemia with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or with another major risk factor who don't achieve their goal on maximum tolerable dose of statin and ezetimibe, a combination of BCCK9 inhibitor is recommended class 1C. 
And as we can see for the first time for the primary prevention, patient at very high risk, but without familiar hypercholesteremia. If the LDL goal is not achieved in maximum tolerable dose of statin and zetamib, a combination with basic canine inhibitor may be considered class 2PC. Also, this is a new recommendation that we can start for patients with acute coronary syndrome whose LDL level are not at the goal despite already taking maximum tolerable statin dose and zetamib. It can be adding ABC scanner inhibitor early after the event during hospitalization should be considered class 2AC. So that's why, uh, my dear colleagues, we have the Nobel Prize for Medicine for the doctors that discover the LDL receptor therapy. And uh, we know now why they are these doctors are very genius and deserve this Nobel Prize. However, still, still, there is a gap for our, as we know, when we reach it to the use the azetamide plus statin plus BCCK9 inhibitor, we reach up to more than 85% reduction of the LDL. But still, we have a little bit 15%. So how can, are we are missing something when we are targeting LDL alone? And what are the other players? This is very important one. We have non-HDL, reflect the cholesterol concentration within all acerogenic lipoprotein. ABOB 100 found in very low-dense lipoprotein, low-dense lipoprotein, intermittent-dense low lipoprotein, chylomacron, total burden of acerogenic particle, which I told you about. Don't forget the total burden of the black burden. This is very important. Hypertragylosidemia also is associated with elevated remnant like particle. Some of these are acerogenic surrogate marker for very, very low dense lipoprotein and the intermittent density lipoprotein. Lipoprotein rated A, it is the risk factor for premature cardiovascular disease. And this is now the exciting era for management of this lipidemia. So uh, in conclusion, uh, uh, my dear colleagues, statin remains a ministry in reducing cardiovascular risk. The addition of Zeta might provide further LDL lowering. New lipid guideline endorse lower LDL goal, particularly for patients with very high risk of associated cardiovascular disease. Only about one quarter of very high risk patients achieve the LDL goal for less than 70 milligram per deciliter or than 55 milligram per deciliter, suggesting the need for addition LDL lowering drug, ezetimibe, and the BC scanner inhibitor. And don't forget the other layer I mentioned to you. So the take home message that LDL reduction remains a treatment goal since high intensity LDL lowering has been proven to reduce cardiovascular event. Several high risk patients, both primary and secondary, are not achieving recommended goal despite high dose statin therapy, leaving them with residual cardiovascular risk. Patients with familiar hyperoxidemia and the statin intolerance are at particularly high cardiovascular risk and they require further LDL law. Mm -hmm. There is always remains unmet need for this high risk patient. Don't forget that. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, uh, you had done a very great job. I would like to ask one question about yes. uh, Enclisiran or Lequio. What yeah. do you think is the role now, the newer drug? which has been cleared by European Society, European Society of Cardiology, uh, Lequio or uh, Inclisiran in management of the lipids. Uh, and this, thank you for this nice question. Inclisiran, uh, I consider it is uh, the coming future for management of this lipidemia. Because as we saw from the different trial, that there is this drug produce more than 50% reduction of the LDL. And it's very rapidly. And it's not like the BCCK9 inhibitor. So in Kilisran, um, in my opinion, it will be the uh, major breakthrough in the coming era for this lipidemia. The only thing is for now that it doesn't allow it to use it too much is still we are waiting the cardiovascular outcome uh, from the trial of Orion program for the uh, Enclisran. But I think, I think the cardiovascular outcome, will, of course, will, we will get benefit because it produces more than 50% reduction in LDL, which had in so many consequences a reduction of cardiovascular event. So it will be a very great rule for uh, even to, uh, to decrease or the, um, the gap in, in lipid-related care by using the increased RAN in the uh, nearby future or coming soon. I feel that it has also some advantage because we give once in six months. So yes, the patient compliance is very good. Yeah, and yes. it is now approved and available in UAE. And we have been using it. So I think uh, it has its own uh, niche now yes, in yes. the further management yes, of the, this. And the patient right. compliance is good. Yes. And uh, economically also, uh, it is almost same cost as PCSK9. 
Yes, yes. This is very important point. The compliance wise, it's very important. And of course, if you you minimize the injection, of course, then you One, have two. that. Yeah, the compliance wise, it will be very nice. And at the end, if you look at the total, the measured price, it will be equal or even less because you have good compliance, severe significant reduction of the LDL. And as I told you, um, we are waiting. The uh, I start to use it really, and I have a good result with my patient. But uh, still, we have the cardiovascular outcome to uh, be published. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. Uh, uh, it Dr. has Sarah. been great. Yes, Dr. Dr. How are you? Uh, yes, nice, nice to hear you. All of us know cumulative exposure of LDL is very important. Yes, we want our patients to have persistently low LDL levels. Yes. But the diabetologist usually achieves, achieves their, uh, uh, looks after the glycemic control by HbA1c or by ambulatory blood glucose monitoring or by the time in range. But for cardiologists, except for serial estimation of LDL, we do not have any other such modality which can tell us the cumulative exposure of LDL. Yes. So whatever uh, day you estimate LDL, it tells you LDL at dead particular level. So is there any test under development which can have an idea about the cumulative exposure of LDL, just like HbA1c or uh, time and range for the diabetics? No, I, 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 for non-invasive, I don't, we have, uh, I mean, we have indirect measure, as you can see the anchor brachial index or CT uh, corona angiography, this can be used. But the, one of the most important thing, of course, it is the invasive technique that you're using in uh, IVAS or something like that, that you can measure the total black burden. But the most important thing is that always we have to know that the earliest, the better uh, to decrease your LDL level. Even if you don't have an, uh, a tool for the time being, but always keep it in your mind. It doesn't matter if you have a tight hemoglobin A1C control for our group of the endocrinologists, still the, you have the uh, microglycemic uh, complications that occur from this lipidemia still exist. You don't control all together. So by the way, by all means that we have to be aggressive for reduction of total black burden as early as you can. And uh, I think maybe Dr. Omar, after me, he will uh, highlight this very important. He's an expert one uh, in this area. But total black burden should be considered. And it, this is, uh, I think it's a new era for management of this lipidemia. Thank you, Dr. Salah. Thank you, Dr. Mary. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.